if you called me Mr. McGraw, all of a sudden <laughs> I'd feel, what's what's happened? What's what's going wrong? Why is he why is he using this language with me? It's, mm. it's it feels very distant. This video is created by Talisman Corporation. We have been providing job opportunities, career advice to the professionals. So if you want to get updated market information, get ideal job, good career advice, please subscribe to our channel. So what is today's content? Well, today's content's uh, quite important as really every video we do is important, of course, but I especially like this one. We're dealing with emails and other business correspondence. Email, as you know, is, is considered, well, it's important in any business, but I would say it's especially important in low context cultures because after meetings, conversations, and so on, it's very common to review information that was discussed in a meeting or a conversation and follow up with emails. So you'll see quite a few of them if you're working in many global companies. I see, I see. All right. Thank you very much. So I guess you have prepared for like top four items. Yes, that's right. So today we talk about, as you said, four items, four points. First of all, the appropriate length of emails in North American culture in particular, when to use formal language and when not to use it, greetings and other forms of address, and also some common phrases that are used in emails. So quite a bit to talk about today. So let's get started. So first of all, lengths of emails. Yes, so this is a very important cultural point. Obviously, depending on the culture, emails can be quite wordy or quite brief. And in North American business, they tend to lean towards being brief. It's usually quite simple. Generally, you'll have some greetings, maybe a friendly phrase, such as, you know, I hope you're doing well. And a general situation, maybe in one or two sentences. And then, of course, the sign off. So it can be just a few sentences, sometimes even less. Does it relate, the formal or informal, does it relate to the relationship in between the person? Yes, that often affects the length of the email as well. So sometimes if people are fairly close or they deal with each other regularly, the emails might be very short. Sometimes there might not even be, if it's a reply to another message, there might not even be a greeting. You may have one in the first one, you know, hi, hi, humio, but then subsequent replies may just be one sentence. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very short. And because there's, there's that expression, as you probably know, time is money. And that's a very North American idea. So the less time you need to spend on emails, the more times you can do other things, basically. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So I have a question. Sometime my clients say, hi, Fumio. And I don't really mind uh, they say Fumio. I feel like more close relationship if they say Fumio, not Fumio-san or Moriuchi-sama. So in the business, just saying like, hi, John, is very common or not common? I would say it's very common in mm -hmm. business, especially between colleagues, people who work together regularly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very common. And using first names is also extremely common. Mm -hmm. Even in more formal emails, actually we can get into the, the formality of the emails, talking about that with the greetings. You may have dear, dear John, that's a little more formal than hi John, of course. But even so, it's, it's often still with the first name. If you use the last name, it kind of shows a bit of distance. Many North Americans, they want to appear friendly, so it's, it's more common, really, it's quite natural to use first names. So as you said, Humio, and probably not even Humio-san, right? So yes, if you say hi, John, that seems quite natural. So let's start using like Fumio or John. Okay, <laughs> all right, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been that before this way. <laughs> no, that's true, that's true. <laughs> okay, okay, that's interesting, thank you. So is there anything about length of emails? 
Yeah, I guess that more or less covers it. So again, usually keeping it brief is fairly good. A few sentences, including the greetings and the sign off is quite common and fine. If they get too long, then that actually can be, for many North Americans, a bit annoying if, if there's too much writing. So keeping it focused and simple is quite good. Still polite. You know, it's nice to say, hi, John, hope you're doing well. But again, if you're very close and you're very busy, it may just be one sentence replies, and that's quite natural. I see, I see, yeah. Can we move to next one? Yes, yes. Uh, and that's, uh, again, talking a little bit more about uh, formal language. So we mentioned a little bit about it in terms of the greetings, but let's go into a little more detail. So in North America, formal language is often good maybe for the very first email when you're connecting with someone for the first time or often if you're dealing with clients, for example, or, or important customers. However, as I mentioned before, if you're working with colleagues or, or anyone that you have an ongoing relationship with, mm -hmm. informal emails are more common. Because again, if you use that formal language, it feels cold and distant, and it could actually negatively affect the relationship. If you called me Mr. McGraw, all of a sudden mm -hmm. I'd feel, what's what's happened? What's what's going wrong? Why is he why is he using this language with me? It's, mm. it's it feels very distant. Or even if uh, you continued with that for a few emails after we met, and you just kept calling me Mr. McGraw, I'd be like, uh, why is he being so cold? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's better to switch into more informal language after you've established a, a relationship, and usually quite early on within mm -hmm. maybe a couple of emails. Um, how about like when I send a uh, apologies email, I feel I should use formal language. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I would say when you are dealing with a client and you apologizing for a mistake, then yes, using formal language there is, is appropriate. Now, if it's something in between colleagues or if it's someone that you have a close relationship with, mm -hmm. even if with an apology, you could probably use less formal language because sometimes if you use that very formal language, it could sound sarcastic. They might think that you're being sarcastic and not actually sorry. So sometimes being too formal might give that impression that it's just, you know, kind of playing a joke on me or something. Why not just say it more naturally? Depending on person, relationship, timing. Yes. All of that is 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 important. And it's not, I would say that there's not an exact rule that in this situation you use this language. It, it, there's a there are a lot of factors that affect uh -huh. I need to feel. Yes, that's that's very important to consider what the other person's reaction is. So same as uh, when I expressing my gratitude or when I ask sing something or ordering something by email. So same. Yeah, again, the relationship is what affects it. Someone you deal with regularly, you're thanking them for something or ordering informal languages is, is probably better to use because again, it, it would feel warmer because you have that closeness. Mm. Uh, but again, something where there's a bit of distance, using formal language would be appropriate, yes. Thank you. So let's move on to next. Yes. So we can talk about greetings and the ways to address people. 